Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a clock tower house. Oh, and by the way, just in case you have any more building related needs, feel free to not only check out the description below, in which I'll be leaving links to all of my tutorial playlists, but I highly recommend checking out the card system, in which I'll be leaving more specific videos and playlists that I think that you guys will really want to check out. If you like this build, honestly guys, check out the card system, you'll probably find loads of other stuff that you'd like to make as well. But that's enough of that, if you want to make the clock tower house, here's what you're going to need. Grab yourself some block of Watts, and some spruce wood, then grab birch wood planks, some dark oak planks, then you'll want to grab yourself some dark oak stairs, and some birch wood stairs, you'll also need some birch wood slabs, grab yourself some black wool, and finally guys, grab yourself some white stained glass paint, and once you have each one of those materials right there, and once you've figured out where you want to make it, I'll be making it right here, you're going to want to kick off your clock tower with a row of 30 spruce wood coming di directly up from the ground, that's 30, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, which is 30. So, once you have your row of 30 spruce wood, you then want to take this top block, this 30th block, and go right of it by 9. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and then take that 9th block and connect it all the way down to the ground, like this. So you want to have a big, big, giant N shape, like that, or a big rectangular shape if you like. Once you have this shape, this is what you want to do next. Take each one of the top two corners of your rectangular shape and extend them towards you, so the top two corners, extend them towards you each by nine with the spruce wood. So that's one, two, whoops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and the other one as well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then connect each one of those knife blocks together and connect each one of those knife blocks down to the ground. And this will be the base of our clock tower after we've done this. This will be the base of it. We also have to do the bit that houses the actual clock, and we also have to do the bit that lies on top of it, that kind of shapes it even more. So, once you've got that taken care of, and that is the base, guys, what you now want to do is, coming all the way up to the top of your tower once again, you now want to one block higher and one block outwards in relation to the very top square at the top of the tower, you want to do another square of spruce wood that goes all the way around the top of the outside of the tower. Very easy to see what you have to do, somewhat difficult to put into words as you guys might understand. So, you want to have something which should look a little bit like this. So it kind of like sits on top of the tower and it's just one block one block widthier, one block girthier, however you want to say it. It's like one block bigger than the entire tower itself. Once you've got that taken care of, what you then want to do is take each one of the four corners of the shape that you've made and go on top of each one of the corners by 11. So that'll be... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 3 more times, uh, one, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and we're going to do these two as well, that'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11, and then this last one, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. And what you then want to do is just connect each one of those 11th blocks together, going all the way around, and this will form a square shape, or a nice big giant cube if you like. And this cube will set atop of our tower, and it will look quite nice. This is where the actual clock part is going to go, so if you guys want to take a look at this, it looks a little bit like that. It kind of looks like a Lego man with his arms and legs ripped off. Once you've got that taken care of, this is what you want to do next. So I figure that we may as well probably shape the top of this thing as well. So what you now want to do, at the very top of the cube shape that you've made, inside of each one of the four corners, you're going to want to do a row of 
four spruce wood coming up inside of each one of the four corners. So you can, can you see where I've placed each one of those spruce wood blocks? Well, on top of those blocks, we want to do four rows of four spruce. So that'll look like one, two, three, four. And then obviously the other three, one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. Lastly, one, two, three, four. And then we're just going to connect each one of those four blocks together. We're going to go all the way around and it will look quite nice. And then we've got to do this a couple more times. So we just want to so far have something which should look a little bit like that. Perfect, you can see that this is kind of building up, it's shaping itself a little bit more. Now, once you've got that taken care of, you now want to, on top of the shape that you've just made, so inside the top of the slightly smaller square shape that you've made, you want to go on top of each one of the four corners, or inside of each one of the four corners, as I should say, I've just placed the spruce wood blocks, this is where we're going to be building these rows. On top of each one of those four spruce wood, we want to do rows of two, so that'll be one, two, and one, two, one, two, and one, whoops, one and two. And then just connect each one of those second blocks together. So you just want to go all the way around and connect each one of those second blocks together like this. And that is perfect, guys. That is exactly what you want. Now, once you have this shape, we have one last thing left to do from here. So you want to Alright guys, this is a little difficult to explain, but this is what we want to do. We are on any side of our clock tower. We want to find the four middle blocks of the particular side right at the top of it, so where we have this smallest square shape, we want to find the four middle blocks, come to the inside of the top, with your birchwood planks, do two rows of four, stemming from the four middle blocks, that'll be one, and two, so that's two rows of four coming towards the center. We then want to take the very end blocks of that second row of four, go on top of them by three with the spruce wood, that's one, two, three, and one, two, three. Connect those together, then take the third blocks once again, and coming across this part of the clock, so towards the back, you want to do one, two, three, and one, two, three, coming from each one of those third blocks. Connect those third blocks together, and then take those second third blocks, and you just want to extend them down each by two. That's one and two, and one and two. So you just want to end up with a shape that should look a little bit like this. And as you can see, it kind of just brings the clock to a point. So you just want to have something which should look in total a little bit like this. And that is perfect. So once you have that taken care of, this is what we have to do next. So it's probably about time that we designate a side to be the front of our clock towers. So let's say that this is the front side of my tower. Any one of the four sides at this point can be it, because it doesn't really matter. Each one of the four sides are symmetrical. They're all the same. So at this point in time, any one of them can be the front. This one's mine. Once you figure that out for yourself, you want to come all all the way to the base of the front of your tower and starting from this front bottom left hand spruce wood going right you want to do this you want to do two dark oak wood stairs one spruce wood then leave a gap of two and then do a spruce wood and then two dark oak wood stairs like this and what you then want to do is with your spruce wood you want to extend each one of those two center spruce wood blocks extend them up until they connect all the way to the top of the tower so you just want to extend them all the way up until you have something which should look a little bit like this. So you have very much separated the base of the tower. Once you've got that taken care of, this is what you have to do next. So, first of all, you're going to want to build all of this inside. So the next bit that we're going to do, we don't want to do it in line with the spruce wood. We want to actually do it one block backwards. And to start off, we just want to starting from the outsides of the inside of our tower, so the outside rows of the inside of the tower, we just want to do two rows of birchwood planks on the very outer part. So we just want to come all the way up from the outer part, and we just want to do two very long rows of birchwood planks, which kind of just match the rows of spruce wood. So we want to have something which should look like this. You guys can see what I'm talking about. The birchwood planks and the glass and the more birchwood planks that we're going to add are going to be on the inside of the tower. And then 
further coming inside, so next to the birchwood plank rows, you want to do two rows of white stained glass. So white stained glass pane, you just want to have that coming towards the center of the tower, like so. And what you can also do is just do birchwood planks behind the two rows of spruce that you have at the center, like where the entrance is going to be. Uh, you just want to have birchwood planks there just to give the glass something to grip onto, like that. What you can now do is this, so the very center rows of this, you want to completely fill the center in with virtual planks, except you want to leave enough room for an entrance, and the entrance is just going to occupy the first two rows of the center part of the tower, so these first two rows, leave those empty, and then fill the rest of the center part in with virtual planks. So you want to have something which should look a little bit, and let me just show you from the outside, because that's what matters, let me just show you, this is how it wants to look from the outside looking in. You want to have something which should look a lot bit like that and that is absolutely perfect guys Once you've got that taken care of this is what you want to do next take out your dark oak wood stairs Starting from the very base of the tower here. You want to leave a Row of four. Okay, so this is a better way to explain it starting from the base of the tower You want to leave four rows of the birch wood and the glass you want to leave four rows alone like this So it'll be what like one two, three, four, and then on the fifth block here, so we now have four separate, and you want to do a row of upside down dark oak wood stairs that kind of spans like the left hand side of the tower to the right hand side of the tower like that. And what you can then do on top of the upside down dark, dark oak wood stairs is you just want to do regular facing stairs like so. Now, once you've done that once, you now want to do that again, and you want to leave the spacing the exact same way. So, like, coming up, we want to leave it four rows alone, so that'll be one, two, three, four, and then we want to do a row of upside-down dark oak wood stairs, and then on top of that, regular-facing dark oak wood stairs. We then want to leave four rows alone, that'll be one, two, three, four, and then upside-down dark oak wood stairs, and on top of that, regular facing dark oak wood stairs like that then it's still going up we want to leave a row of four so that's one two three four and then upside down dark oak wood stairs and then on top of that regular facing dark oak wood stairs and i'm not sure if we have to do any more or if we've reached the top we have reached the top and at the top you'll know if it's spaced correctly because you should have one two, three, four rows, and then the top row of spruce wood. And you just want to end up with something that should look a little bit like this. And this is what you want to have for like the base of your tower. You want to have something which should look a little bit like that. Once you've got that taken care of, this is what you want to do next. So we're now going to fill in the actual clock face of the front of the tower. And to do this, it's actually quite simple. So again, we're building inside of the spruce wood. We're not building on the outer face of it. So we're one row behind the spruce wood. We're still on the front. And we want to just do an entire row of birchwood planks right at the base of the face. So we want to have an entire row of virtual planks right at the base like this. What we can then do for the next row going from left to right do this. Do three virtual planks that's one two three. Then do four dark oak wood planks that's one two three four. We then want to do two upright diagonals that's one two. Upper by three one two three. Two up left diagonals one two. Left three then two bottom left diagonals, then down by three, one, two, three, then do a bottom right diagonal to connect everything together. What you can then do is just fill the outer shape in, so everywhere outside of that circular shape that you've just made, fill in with virtual planks, and inside of the circular shape, you want to just completely fill it in with quartz, so on the outer shape, you want to fill in virtual planks like I just have, and on the inside shape, block of quartz, and this will be like the clock face, and then we're just going to add some hands, uh, we're also going to make the clock 3D, and make uh, the little outer face look a little bit better, so that's what you want to have so far. Then, take out your black wall, and we just want to add hands, so we just want to, starting from the top right hand corner, so this kind of like corner block, bottom left diagonally of this, we want to do three bottom left diagonals with the black wall, and it kind of wants to be on the outer part of the quartz, so that'd be one, two, three, just like that, and that's just like their, their clock hands, that is as simple as that. What you then want to do is take out your dark oak planks and extend the outer part of the clock 
with your Dark Oak Wood Planks. So where you've placed Dark Oak Wood Planks inside of that face, you just want to extend them out by one row with your Dark Oak. Then take out your Dark Oak Wood Stairs and place an appropriately facing Dark Oak Wood Stairs inside each one of the four corners of the clock part of your tower. So you want to have something which should look a little bit like this. Pretty simple. Once you've got that taken care of, guys, you have completed the clock portion. We can now move up a couple of rows. So, moving all the way up to the bit just above the clock part, this is what you want to do next. So, starting from the left-hand side of this part where the clock starts to go in again, moving up and down, you want to do this. Coming across, do a row of virtual planks. So, just do a row of virtual planks coming down. Then do a row of white stained glass pane, then a row of spruce wood, then do two rows of birch, then a row of spruce wood, then a row of white stained glass pane, then a row of birch wood blank. So you want to have something which should look a little bit like this, and these are not built inside of the actual layers of spruce wood these are built on the outer part so like in line with the spruce wood that's what we want to have so once you've got that first tier taken care of we now want to move up a tier to where we have just this single row exposed and going from left to right inside of this row we want to do one glass then one spruce two birch one spruce one glass and that's how we want to fill in that particular tier now moving on to the final tier right at the top we just want to completely fill that in with virtual planks and just to point that out again where for the base of the clock and the actual clock face we have been building inside of the spruce wood outline for the very top where we have this free tier layer we want to build in line with the spruce wood so that is what you want to have guys and this is what you want to have for the entire front of the clock obviously we're missing a couple of bits but we'll be taking care of those later so that's what you want to have so far and not only do you want to do this on the very front side of the clock, but you also want to do this on each one of the other three sides. The only difference being is there is not an entrance on the other three sides. So on the other three sides, we're just going to completely fill this center part in with virtual blanks. So we're coming to the left hand side here and we're doing the exact same thing. So to start things off, we have to kind of like separate out the base of the clock. So we're on the back left hand corner now and going from this bottom back left hand corner block to the front of the clock going right we want to do two stairs one spruce two stairs one spruce two stairs we then want to connect each one of those spruce wood blocks all the way up to the top here we want to connect them all the way up to the top so that's the first one and then the second one we're going to do the same uh, so we're just connecting this all the way up to the top we're then going to take out our birchwood planks and we're going to do the two outer rows of birchwood which sits one block behind the two corners so it just wants to sit one block behind the actual spruce wood outline. I'm now going to do the two layers of white stained glass so that we then coming inwards from the outer part we want to do a layer of white stained glass. Then we're going to do layers of birchwood planks until we completely fill in the center part now because not only do we have to give the birchwood not only do we have to give the glass something to grip onto in the form of birchwood planks but we also want to fill in the center of this side in with birchwood planks so we'll just end up with something that should look quite familiar to you guys there we go that's exactly what we have on the front except we now also want to add in those dark oak wood stairs don't we so on the outer part of the clock you guys know we want to leave a gap of four then do the two layers of stairs so start from the right hand side here we want to leave a gap of one two three four and then upside down dark oak wood stairs then a regular facing then a gap of one two three four and then upside down stairs then a regular facing you guys know how this is done uh, that's the regular facing then a gap of four one two three four then upside down oh come on come on upside down stairs then 
regular facing stairs and I think we have one more to do yet we do so that'll be one two three four and then we just want to do upside down dark oak wood stairs and then finally regular facing dark oak wood and we should end up with something that should look a little bit like this and this is exactly what we have at the base of the front of the tower so once you've got that taken care of we can now come up and do the clock so the clock face, remember guys, is still one row behind the actual spruce wood outline. So first of all, we just want to do a row of birch wood planks at the very base. And then starting from the left hand side going right, we want to do three birch wood planks, then four dark oak wood planks, then two upright diagonals, up by three, that's one, two, three, two up left diagonals, one and two, then left by three, one, two, three, then two bottom left diagonals, one and two, then down by three, one, two, three, and then a bottom right diagonal to connect everything together. What we can then do is just connect, or rather, what we can then do is fill the outer part of the circular shape in with virtual planks, and then we can fill the inside part where the actual clock's going to be. Oh, and we did forget the bottom right hand corner there, but that's going to be easily rectified. We then just want to fill the inside here with quartz and then the outer part in with virtual planks. So we just want to have something which should look like this. We then want to take the outer part of the clock where we have dark oak wood planks and extend that coming out of the clock by one row. We then want to add the hands which will be in the same position as they are on the front. So starting from that top upper right hand corner block we want to do three bottom left diagonals with the black wall. We then want to take out our dark oak wood stairs and do upside down and regular facing dark oak wood stairs where we have to in each one of the four corners of the inside and this is driving mental place the right way please and what you'll end up with should look a little bit like this and that's perfect guys that's what you want to have for the clock face now once you've got that taken care of we just have to do this upper tier part so coming to the lead part here so where we have these three tiers we want to first of all starting with the largest and the base layer going up and down going from left to right we want to do a layer of virtual planks followed by a layer of glass then spruce wood whoops come on place the spruce wood then a la two layers of virtual planks that's one and two then the reverse it's going to be a layer of spruce wood then a layer of white stained glass pane then a layer of birch wood planks like that now for the next tier coming from left to right we want to do one glass then one spruce two birch one spruce, one glass. And now to fill in the little mini top part here, we just want to completely fill in that side with virtual planks. And you should end up with something that should look a little bit like this, guys. And that's exactly what, what you want to have. So not only do we want to do this on the left hand side and the front but we also want to do this on the final two sides whilst i would usually hang in here and build them with you guys what i'm going to try doing instead to cut down on the length of the video is i'm going to go away and i'm going to apply exactly what we've done on those first two sides and i'm going to apply it to those last two sides I'm going to be doing the exact same thing that I've already done, but you guys don't really need me to run it through with you two more times, do you? We've done it twice already. If you get stuck, could just refer to any one of the two finished sides that you've already done. I'll be back in a moment once I've done the exact same thing to the last two sides. Back in one. Alright guys, so once you, like me, have completed each one of the four sides of your clock tower, so once you have each one of the four sides completely filled in in the exact same way, except for the front, but the only difference there, of course, is that we have enough room for the entrance, once you have reached this point right here, and pause this if necessary, if you are still working on that, we can then move on to the next bit. So we just have to put the final touches right at the top of the tower. So coming all the way up to where we have these three legs, right at the top of the tower this is what you want to do first of all take out your dark oak wood stairs around the first here this so the first part that comes out at the very top of the clock part you want to go all the way around the top of the first tier with your dark oak wood stairs and that's all we want to do for this part so just at the first tier here we want to go completely go all the way around the outside of the top part with your dark oak wood stairs so you want to have something which should look like this now 
once you've done that to the first tier, we now want to do the exact same thing to the next tier, but we also want to do something a little bit different. So once you've went all around the top of the spruce wood of the second tier, so we're just currently doing that. So once you've went all the way around the top of it, you then want to take out your birch wood slabs and you want to fill the top part of it in with birch wood slabs. So you just want to go all the way around the top now and you just want to fill in all of the empty space with your birch wood slabs like this. So we just want to have something which should look a little bit, hang on, we've almost done it, a little bit like that and that is perfect. Those are the first two tiers taken care of. Now, for the final tier right at the top, we first of all want to go all the way around the top of it with our dark oak wood stairs. So we want to, again, just like the exact same thing that we've done two times already, we want to go all the way around the top of it with our dark oak wood stairs. We then want to fill the top of it in with our birch wood slabs. So we're just going to fill the entire top part in with birch wood slabs. And then we want to take the four middle blocks right at the top of the tower and we just want to extend those up by an extra one with the birch wood slabs like that. And in doing that, you just want to end up with something that should look a little bit like this coming out of the top of your clock tower. And in total, just to show you guys what the entire thing looks like, it wants to look a little bit like this, which looks quite nice, doesn't it guys? Doesn't it? look nice and majestic it does it looks fantastic now once you've got that taken care of you've actually 100% fully completed the actual structure of your clock of your clock tower that's it 100% fully complete now I'm just going to show you guys a couple of things before we fade out and I show you the original version so let me show you where the stairs and where the actual floors of the tower are supposed to go let me show you where they're supposed to go and then I can show you the original version of this so that's the structure complete. So I'm now coming to the inside of the clock tower. I'm taking out the birchwood stairs. And starting from the front left hand corner, we want to in line with this birchwood plank that we have right here. You want to start off the stairs here. So you can actually walk into it and you can walk around it. You want to start off the stairs there. And then basically the stairs just want to kind of keep curving around the entire tower, and whenever you hit the corner, you want to place a dark oak wood plank. And that dark oak wood plank, I mean, it's just, it just makes sense. Like, you, you can't really, like, place a stair, like, going here, and then place another one here. Well, uh, hang on. And then it'd be another one here. That doesn't look right. So whenever we hit a corner, we want to place a dark oak wood plank, like, in line with those stairs. And then we just want to continue the pattern going around again. And that's how it wants to look. So, starting from the bottom, it starts just left of the entrance here as you walk in. Coming all the way up, it curves around. And whenever you hit a corner, you place a dark oak wood plank. And these stairs keep going and going and going until you eventually reach the very top of your tower, which shouldn't be too much longer, I think. I don't think that we have to do too many more rotations. So let me just show you where it stops. I actually designed this so that the floors stop as soon as you get to like the inside part of the clock. So you guys know where we have the inside part of the clock or where we have the clock on the outside. I suppose we haven't seen the inside yet, really. Um, that is where things are supposed to stop. We've just about reached it, I think, yeah. So the stars, the stairs stop here, and you can see that they just keep curving round and around and around until we eventually get to the top, which is quite nice. And then right at the top here is where we would have a nice empty room. It's uh, It'll be the biggest space in the house because, I mean, this top part, it's nice and open, very big, very open. And you just want to have something which should look like that in regards to the stairs. Where are the floors, you guys might be wondering to yourself. So, I designed the floors to be in line with the... Can you see onto the outside? That's why I'm looking outside right now, where we have the two layers of stairs on the outside. I designed each one of the floors to be in line with that top row of stairs that we have on the outside. So you can see that, like, this is where the first floor will be. The second floor will be here, if you guys can see why. I'm sure that you guys can see why. I mean, it's right in line with the second, the top layer of stairs that we have on the outside. And then the next set will be here. What? Hang on. They will be here. 
and then the next floor will be here, so on and so forth until we eventually reach the top, which I have, so they are spaced so that they are in line with the top row of stairs that we have on the outer part. That is where the stairs go, those are where the floors go. Now that you guys know that, why don't I flip over and why don't I show you the original version of the clock tower? So I'll be back in just a moment, guys, once I have swapped worlds and I can show you what I've done to the interior and I can show you what I've done to the exterior as well, just to give you guys a few ideas. But that is the structure. You guys know where the floors go, you know where the stairs go. That's all of the important stuff. So I'll be back in just a moment, guys. Tutorial portion over, but let me show you what you can do to your own tower. Alright guys, so we're now in my current creative world and this is the original version of the clock tower house. We're going to take a look at the outside of it first of all and then we'll move in. So for the outside, I wanted to keep it extremely simple, very, very simple as a matter of fact. All we have on the outside, we surrounded the actual base of the building with flowers. I believe that those are rose bushes and those are red tulips. I think that that's what, yep, those are red tulips and yep, those are rose bushes. Through the rose bushes on the corners, through the tulips all the way in between. Oh, and there's also rose bushes either side of the entrance. Then, as you can see, we have two layers of path going all the way around the outside. On the outer part of the second layer of the path, we have a layer of spruce wood going all the way around the path. We then have spruce wood raised up where the either side of the entrances and we also have it on each one of the four corners and then interconnecting the raised up spruce woods we have ourselves some birch wood fence and that looks quite nice we've not gone crazy and i think that it complements the house quite a bit it doesn't detract from the house at all just makes it look a little bit nicer and it doesn't really draw too much attention away from the actual big giant structure and that's kind of the point. We don't want to have a nice, luxurious, amazing looking garden that kind of takes it away from the actual building itself, which is kind of the point. So that's the outside, guys. I'm sure that you'll be able to recreate that if you so choose. So let's move on to the inside. The inside is very, very simple as well. So ground floor here, we have just a nice little bit of an entrance here. We've got a couple of paintings on the wall. We've got a bit of a rug down just to just to kind of say hello you know really there should also be there should also there, there really should just be some seats i think just in case you want a nice bit of a rest before you tackle the many many layers of stairs that we have here so this is kind of just the this is the entrance this is the the welcome room if you like you can look at pinocchio and he's there uh, he's I don't know what he's staring at, that kind of looks like a plate of food that's all been mashed together by How To Basic, and there we have just a lovely, lovely series of photos. That's much better than Pinocchio looking at mashed up food, so that's the entrance. Moving all the way up onto the second floor here, here we have just kind of like a little bit of an armor room, taking advantage of the armor stands, which I love. Uh, kind of just a concept for a couple of rooms. Um, very, very simple, very easy to do. Here we have a little bit of a kitchen here. Very, very simple. We've got some ovens, we've got some counters, we've got a sink, we've got uh, a refrigerator. Here we have kind of like uh, just some cupboards and stuff. Really, really easy to do. Doesn't take any time whatsoever. Um, here on the next level, what do we have up here? What do... Oh, here we have kind of like a bit of a bathroom here. We have a toilet, we have a sink, we have a shower. I, I tried to make a mirror. Um, that... that... <laughs> That's the best I could come up with. I couldn't I couldn't come up with anything better. It doesn't look like a mirror. It doesn't look like one in the slightest. I mean maybe maybe this would look a little bit better. Would it would this look better? Uh and uh, no. No, no, it wouldn't. No, it wouldn't. I like my original idea a lot better, despite the fact it doesn't look like a mirror. So here on the next floor, we have a bathroom, and then moving up here, we have a nice little bit of a library. The library's looking a little bit empty, isn't it? Isn't it looking a bit empty? Shouldn't shouldn't we do something about this? What well what do we what do we do about this? We had a couple of bookshelves here, maybe one here. That doesn't look right. I don't like the look of that. Maybe maybe just may, maybe leave it. Maybe I left it that way for a reason. We have a nice bit of a, a bit of a library on this floor. Uh, moving up to the next floor. Oh, here's here's the top floor. Um, here we just have a bedroom. Bedroom's very simple. We've just got. We've just got some, we have some beds, we have some glorious looking night lights in the form of beacons, and that's all we have. So, uh, really, I just wanted to show you guys that if you wanted to, if you put the effort in, you could really just mess about with these rooms, no matter how small. You can make it look cool. I mean, I like every single one of these rooms, except maybe the top one, except maybe the bedroom. Uh, I ran out of ideas. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I ran out of ideas. I didn't actually. I, I didn't run out of ideas. There's plenty more utility rooms and stuff that I could have made, but... 
And I definitely could have came up with some better ideas for all of this empty space, but I kind of wanted a bedroom up here, and I didn't want to make any further rooms. I mean, if you wanted to, you could put in more and more floors. You could at the very least get two more floors out of this, maybe even three, if, uh, if you kept spacing it out properly. But I wanted to leave this nice top room all the way open, and uh, honestly, I really, really like this house. I mean, it doesn't even have to be a house if you don't want it to turn into a house. You could just use it as a big giant clock tower. You don't actually have to fill the thing if you don't want to. But um, hopefully that's given you guys some concepts for some of these rooms because I'm sure that some of you guys were thinking, thinking to yourselves like, ah, these rooms are really, really small. What can I do with them? Well, turns out you can do you know, a fair amount. I like the kitchen as well. I, I think I actually did a pretty good job with the kitchen. Um... Also, I like the armor room, despite the fact that there's not too much going on here, I quite like the armor room. I like every single one of them, I don't know what I'm talking about, I like every single one. And uh, and that's just given you guys, hopefully, uh, hopefully that's gave you guys a couple of ideas. I know I, I get a lot of messages, I get a lot of comments saying, TSMC, what can I do? I don't know what to do to the interiors, I don't know how they can look, I don't know what to do to them. Well... There you go, there's a, there's a couple of concepts for you, especially for small rooms. Not only can you apply this to the to the clock tower house, which looks fantastic, I love this thing. I really do like this, I've never made anything like this before. Not only can you apply this to your clock tower house, but you could apply that to any small room, really. You can, no matter how little the amount of room that you have, you can always stuff something and then you can make it look very good. I think that, like, five out of six of those are really quite nice. Are there, are there five, the one, two, three, four, five... Six. I think that there's six floors in total. Very, very nice. But anyway, hopefully you guys like this. Hopefully you've managed to make it. And if you've done both of those things, guys, I'd really appreciate it if you could give this video a like, a favor, a share. Anything you'd feel like doing, tell me out, guys. I would do that. Uh, yeah. I would just always vastly appreciate it. We're not going to redo that. I would always vastly appreciate it if you could like, favorite, share my videos. If you wouldn't mind, guys, especially if you have made it for yourself. And if you like it, I'd really, really appreciate it. Helps things like this get around it. It only encourages me to do more unique builds, to do different builds than I usually do. As you can see, I've, I've been working on some different things recently. And hopefully you guys have really been appreciating it. So, like, favorite, share if you wouldn't mind. Feel free to comment down below. What do you want to see me make next? Always interested in your guys opinions what you want to see next check out the description below check out the card system especially the card system you'll find loads of stuff in there that you'll like if you like this you'll find loads of stuff in there trust me i'm gonna link my real world buildings playlist you guys will love that you will it'll be fantastic make some stuff out of there like favorite share if you wouldn't mind guys comment down below check out the card system i'll see you in the next video